Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how to perform a postdoc test to a Pearson chi-square goodness of fit test with SPSS by performing a pairwise binomial test. Now that sounded like a lot, so a quick recap. The Pearson chi-square goodness of fit test showed uh, the marital status. Uh, that the five categories that we had there, which were things like married, separated, divorced, etc. Um, were not equally distributed, so not 20% for each of the five categories. The most important question next is then, which ones are significantly different? And in order to answer that, we'll need some form of a so-called postdoc test. Unfortunately, I haven't found much information about this, so this is a bit of my own uh, uh, IDs mixed together, and I actually unfortunately also haven't found a quick way of doing this with SPSS by only by performing each one by one. So I also have a little bit of an Excel file here where I actually have the oh let me delete those uh, the all possible pairs listed. So married and widowed, married and divorced, married and separated, etc. etc. So first we need to select married and widowed only in SPSS. So that can be done by going to data and then all the way at the bottom there select cases then click on if condition is satisfied and then click on if you can either now double click on the variable and then click on equals uh, one type in a space and type in capitals or another space and again marital status and you can also simply type it in equals click on continue, click on OK and if you go uh, back to your data file you will see now in the data view that everyone who is married is still selected but anyone who's divorced is not and uh, anyone who's widowed is also still selected so it actually all the ones are still selected all the twos are still selected and anything else isn't now for the binomial test we can go to analyze non-parametric tests, legacy dialogues, and then binomial. Click on the variable that you want, move it to the test variable list, and leave the test proportion at 50%. Although we had five categories and previously tested if each was different from 20%, we now are only comparing two, so we want to compare if they're 50-50 or significantly different from each other. Click on OK. And in the output we get the results and the most important one is the significance up here which we will actually have to adjust because we're going to be doing a lot of tests so double click on and the output double click again on the significance and then simply copy ctrl c go to the excel or word file where you want to keep track of everything and paste the result Go back to SPSS. Luckily there is an option that is called Recall Recently Used Dialogues. Click on the Select Cases. If, and now we want to compare the ones and the marital status three with each other. Click on Continue. Click on OK. And again in the Recently Used Binomial Test it remembers my settings. So I can click on OK. And now it has Married versus Divorced. So double click again and again on the significance, copy, back to my Excel and paste the result. Back to SPSS and select cases again, if, and go for the, the one against four, continue and OK, perform the test again, click on OK, and as you might notice this is quite tedious, so if you know of any faster way of doing this without using SPSS syntax, I'll highly uh, appreciate it if you would let me know in the comment section. Now, I won't be doing this, all of them. I hope you got the general idea. I've actually done this already, and here are the full results. Now, as I mentioned before, because we're doing 10 tests, as you can see, there's 1, 2, 3, and that goes all the way down to 10. And each time we have a decision at, let's say, 5%, or if you like, the 0.05 uh, threshold, we have a risk of this 10 times. And then the risk of making at least one 
uh, mistake is actually pretty high. I think it's around 40% if not even higher. So to adjust for this, um, there are various methods for this uh, to control for type 1 error rates as it's uh, technically called. Uh, but one pretty straightforward is the Bonferroni method, who says if you have uh, 10 pairwise tests, then you simply divide the significance level that you had by the number of tests, and that will be your new threshold. Now, as you can see, almost all of these are in scientific notation, so let me change that to just a number. And as you can see, they're actually all far below the 0 .0, uh, 0.005 even. This one is the closest, but so they're all actually significant so in this case all the percentages were significantly different from each other and also from 20 percent so or at least they were significantly different from each other so uh, you can also do it the other way around you can simply say well i'll take this one and then multiply it by the number of tests that's another option uh, you have to do that for each of them i'll quickly do this with excel you can also use a calculator and now you can compare it to the original 0 0.05 but also even the highest one is still below the 0 0.05 to know how many pairwise tests you've actually done uh, in this case because i listed all of them it can easily be seen uh, in general you can say well if you have five categories you take the number of categories minus one you multiply those two results with each other and, and then you actually divide that by two to actually get the 10. So if you would have had four categories, you would have done six pairwise tests. Now, this is just my approach to it. If you have any suggestions uh, on how to do this quicker with SPSS, like I said, without syntax, uh, I'll highly appreciate it. Um, if you want to know more about how to interpret these results, please check out the companion website, which is uh, linked in the description below.